Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great and for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. Today we are featuring Mr. Flex himself, Buzzwall. He is one of the Ultra Beasts. We had a request a little while ago and thank you to whoever that was and I'm sorry I don't have your message or name on top of the screen. We've had a bunch of comments since then and trying to find it was very difficult but you know who you are. Thank you so much, and I hope you enjoy this episode today with the Buzzwall. It is a very unique Pokemon, one of the Ultra Beasts, bug fighting type, so it has a big weakness to flying, which is probably one of the reasons why we haven't really seen it in the format or kind of Sword and Shield because Max Airstream is such an issue and flying types are pretty strong now uh, in this in this generation. Uh, of course, a lot stronger in previous kind of series where electric types and flying types weren't as prominent, but we had things like Togekiss that were always kicking around. Um, so the team today kind of is a little bit well, it's very centered around the buzz wall. We've got Trick Room on P2, which definitely helps kind of support it. We've got Eerie Impulse on there to slow special attackers down in particular. Uh, and then we've got Gigalith to help out with those big flying threats that Buzzwall really doesn't like kind of going up against. Uh, rounding the team off, we've got uh, Zapdos. It gives the team a nice offensive electric outlet. It gives you flying. Uh, alternative speed control with Airstream there as well, a fire type as well. Um, and also gives us a ground immunity to something like Gigalith, which definitely helps. And, and and another switch into Gigalith with that flying resist, which Buzzwall doesn't like too much. The one thing that Buzzwall does have going for it is it's got sky high uh, defense stats. So it can go up against things like uh, Glastria pretty well, uh, especially in a trick room. So I'm hoping in today's episode, we'll be able to kind of get it going, get it rolling, get the momentum going with beast boost and stuff like that, and uh, pick up a couple of wins and really showcase the team. As always, there's a poker base down in the description below if you want to check out the details of the team. And if you stick around until the end, of the episode i'll be throwing up a rental for this particular team so you can try the mr flex out for yourself so without further ado friends hope you enjoyed today's episode and we'll get into our first match of today's video okay up first we have a amoongus incineroar galarian zapdos al creamy Toko and Reggie Alecki team. Interesting team. Uh, it's not something you see every day, but you can kind of make up some assumptions here. Obviously, the Alcremi going to have that decorate to boost things like the Galarian Zapdos in particular, if it is scarfed. Uh, if not, it will be gone after things like Toko. Uh, it can decorate everything, but you kind of want to decorate before your, your, your partner in Pokemon attacks, so we've got to be looking at that. Potentially giving away an item on it as well. Uh, we could potentially go Incineroar here. I think... Tapu Fini is probably quite useful in this match, along with Zapdos potentially. Um, so that would lead. I just think the Zapdos is good against the, the Galarian Zapdos in a lot of ways, and it can do a lot of work against the team in general. Got to watch out for Tapu. Uh, sorry, not Tapu. Reggie Aleki. Uh, because it will cause us a lot of issues. I do want the terrain support for Amoongus, Spores, and things like that can be pretty problematic. And then Buzzwall to round off the team. Buzzwall pretty threatened here, but I still think it can do a job if it comes in at the right time. Uh, we'll just have to see how we get on in this first one. Hopefully, Mr. Flex can do it for us here. Um, obviously, not the, the most kind of conventional mix of Pokemon that we see, but it's always nice to see like people being like innovative with, with teams and things like that to try and catch you off. And you've just got to kind of try and use the best of your knowledge base to, to have a engage what your opponent's trying to do. Like here you would say, obviously decorate with the Galarian uh, Zapdos is going to be the thing that what your opponent's trying to do. The Intimidate, not ideal here, but we do have the opportunity to go for the Max Airstream here. If we want, we can go Max Airstream, fake out into the Zapdos. It might backfire on us. Um, because it might max. That's the big problem. So the other option here is go fake out into Alchemy. You can pretty much guarantee that we'll be able to stop the, the Decorate at least. And then the max airstream here should be enough to give us at least a jump onto the, um, the Galarian Zapdos the next turn. If nothing else, it kind of forces my opponent's hand to go for the airstream themselves, which into our Zapdos isn't going to be effective. And it's not likely at plus one to pick up the Incineroar, although it depends on the item. It depends what my opponent decides to go for, of course. 
But I feel like our hands are tied with our own Zapdos. We have to go for the max airstream. We have to go after the Zapdos here. Now my opponent could potentially switch the Zapdos out, keep it for later on in this game, but then they forgo the kind of the boost that they just got. So all things going well, we might be able to just remove the Zapdos pretty quickly. And it's one big kind of um, threat to our buzz wall, of course. Now my, my controller is low on health. But thankfully I have a nice wire here. So excuse me while I uh, try and maneuver this while this turn goes off. And we are going to see the uh, Galarian Zapdos also max this turn. Okay, we're safe. We're safe. We've got a controller plugged in. And we're going to see the decorate. I imagine that's what we'll see. I don't know if we'll have enough to take down the Zapdos this turn, of course. It's massive. Hope in hand. Oh, that's the other option, of course, as well. Fake out is useless. <clears throat> but the airstream is going to be useful. We should get it in two airstreams. Oof, just about, probably just, mind. Okay, well. Let's see what they go for. If they don't airstream, then they're in a bit of trouble. Max quick. Okay, that's kind of all. That's that's all right. That's all right. Buzzwell not in the best place to come in this next turn, but could do some work and get help us get rid of the Zapdos with a double up because another airstream will put the Buzzwell. <clears throat> no, it won't we won't outspeed. Tapu Finny will though, so we could muddy water an airstream or moonblast an airstream. <clears throat> Moonblasting is the, the safer option, of course. But we got to airstream again. Yeah, we got a Moonblast. Moonblast is a safer option. <clears throat> and the thing is with Alcremie, it doesn't really get anything like... It doesn't get anything like uh, Tailwind, Trick Rumor, so there's no like speed control that can kind of catch us off guard here. This should be enough. Not quite. But like I say, the Finny now will be able to outspeed the Zapdos and should get the Moonblast and kick up the knockout. So we should be okay. There we go. Yeah. And now we're in a good position to kind of get uh, Finny either call minding or just go after whatever comes in. Like Aleki probably comes in now, which is a little bit awkward for us, of course, because Aleki can still do a lot of work, especially helping hand boosted. But we have got the jump on it with Zapdos. But Amoongus coming in. Now this is where the terrain helps us out a bunch. Um, do we Calm Mind here? We could take the option to Calm Mind. It might see us a little bit better against something like Aleki that could come in later. Now the problem is, again, obviously the Decorate. And that Zapdos is going to be prone to go into sleep here. Just because we're not affected by the terrain. So the sport can come out and do some work. But the car mine gonna be super useful. Whatever. And that damage onto Amoongus is really, really good. Now Buzzwall is probably gonna be a, a savior in this match. I can see it happening now. It's just hard switching to it the next turn. Especially if we don't see a spore here, which we probably will. But we now should be able to take at least an attack off the um, off the Reggie Alecki. Yeah, and there's a spore. Hmm. Now the question is, do we switch or do we just allow Zapdos to potentially wake up? Because that's that's the other option, and maybe protect Finny this turn. Or do we just muddy water? Moonblast. Problem is Moonblast in here is a little bit risky because if they Rage Powder, the Muddy Water is the best option and Heat Wave in as well. Now we are going to stay asleep with Zapdos. We've just got to hope that they go after Finny rather than Zapdos here. Yeah, Moongus coming in. Alchemy going to hit the field once again. That Regenerator going to activate on the Moongus, which makes it a little bit difficult for us, obviously. Regieleki just protecting, so that gives us a little bit of room to kind of wake up with Zapdos, which is ideally what we want, you know. Um, the Muddy Water going to hit that Alchemy a little bit harder, obviously, with that Calm Mind boost that we've got under our belt. 
uh, but we'd still need to be a little bit careful with helping hand and with with decorate as well you know come out um, but we do have the option now just to go for that moon blast into the Regieleki and also just hit that heat wave button with the Zapdos and we're gonna see the, the buzz wall in this match we've got to we've got to see it okay electro web coming out that's fine that just reduces the speed of Zapdos by one stage God, that does so much damage critical hit not ideal we need Zapdos to wake up here really that would be the best case scenario because the heat wave damage plus the moon blast will be enough and it is it looks like hmm yeah it looks like it's scoffed yeah it has to be scoffed because we were plus two with Zapdos or more will we plus three moon blast enough though so that's fine okay and if Zapdos wakes up here that's ideal <clears throat> okay Plus one moon blast enough. So that electro web crit really kind of uh, hurt us. Okay, Zapdos didn't wake up. I just missed that completely. Don't know what I was looking at. So the Alcrimi, it had to be scoffed though. Because it outsped the Aleki, right? No, it didn't outspeed. What am I talking about? Let's just ignore that I said anything about anything being scoffed. And we'll heat wave and we'll. Mm, I don't know what I've done. Probably. Okay, heat wave's fine. Misses the Alchemy, hits the Zap, the the Amoongus, which is what we want. What are we going to see? What did we hit? Did we hit the Moonblast button or did we hit the Muddy Water button? I can't remember. I'm so confused at the minute. I'm like, I'm so confused about this Alchemy that, yeah, I'm not, yeah, this wasn't. But it is enough. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. The decorator not doing enough and the critical hit coming in and clean this one up. I don't know what you guys are thinking, what I'm thinking, you know? I don't even know what I'm thinking. Just chatting, chatting, but we haven't seen... Oh, come on. Why would you do that? Why? Get the salt out. We didn't even see Buzzwall. That's what makes it worse. I wanted to get Buzzwall on the field. It's the Buzzwall show today. The Flex show. Well... Let's be sporting about it. They might have had just internet issues, which I've had plenty of times in the past. We'll not make assumptions, but good game to my opponent. We'll jump into our next match of today's episode. Okay, up next, we've got a team of Landorus, Therian, Grimmsnarl, Charizard, Glastria, Torkoal, and Venusaur. So pretty heavy Sun team here with the screen support from Grimmsnarl. Uh, no speed control really outside of Max Airstream. Potentially scary face on Grimmsnarl could be an option as well as Thunder Wave there. Um, but the Airstream from Landorus, Charizard are going to be the kind of main forms outside of the Chlorophyll on the Venusaur that's provided by the Sun from that Torkoal. Uh, okay, I mean Gigalith, Buzzwall have a really good time here. Especially if we can get our Trick Room set up, which is totally possible because it doesn't look like there's too many options for my opponent to have. Uh, something like Taunt, other than the Grim Snarl, but we can fake the Grim Snarl out if it goes down that route. Um, the biggest threat for P2, I think, here would be definitely uh, like Torkoal Charizard lead for sure. But then we could switch to something like Gigalith and then have like Buzzwall in the back to kind of deal with that. Um, so yeah, I think Incineroar P2, Buzzwall, Gig, big Gig. Is going to help us we'll go with this we'll see what we can do in the second one today hopefully we can see a bit more of the buzzwall in this one because it is a team all about buzzwall and that's what we want to uh, try and showcase see if we can catch will cat off uh off guard and uh, get the buzzwall gone i've got a feeling though gigalith might be the the star of the show but we'll see we'll see how it kind of plays out um we're going to see landorus and uh, grim snarl up top and uh, yeah, we have, I mean, we got a nice way to fake out the Grim Snarl turn one if we want. Got to be a bit careful, of course, because the Grim Snarl may carry fake out of its own um, and go for that and kind of shut down and waste our turn of fake out and allow the landers to get a turn. Um, like Sword Stance Up or something, or just an attack on to, to Incineroar here. Uh, but I feel like, yeah, fake out Grim Snarl Trick Room is our best best option so let's see if we can we can pull it off um yeah i, I would worry here a little bit about the landerus yeah either switching now we're going to see probably torkoal hit the field well trained torkoal but we should be able to get a trick room up the thing is we're not going to be able to stop the screen support from the uh the grim snarl of course 
but we, we, we're we going to be able to get Gigalith into a nice position this next turn, uh, which is always useful. My opponent's in the right thing, though, getting the, the landers off the field. Um... No, they fake. Oh, no, no, we got the trick room up. What are we talking about? What am I talking about? Yeah, so I think. It's a parting shot. Or do we just do a hard switch? Like a hard switch might be better, you know? Hard switch to gigs. And then go for. Did we just want damage? I think I'd probably prefer damage onto Grimstall here. Because uh, Torkoal is going to be way more threatened against the Gigalith than the Grim Snarl is. So it's better to just get damage onto the Grim Snarl as soon as we can. <clears throat> You've got to expect that the Landorus probably will rear its head back in at some point. Probably the Torkoal going out this next turn. Um, after we see this screen set up, the light screen set up from the Grim Snarl there and the eruption coming out. Not going to be boosted by the sun. Gigalith going to be able to take it pretty well as along with the, uh, the Porygon 2. Um... Well, at least we'll get a decent amount of damage onto the, the Grim Snarl here. Now, this next turn, we've got the option where we could potentially max, but I don't know if I want to max just yet. Maybe just a Rock Slide and a try attack into the Torkoal's the best option because then we catch potentially the Lander is coming in. The Torkoal's got a... Ooh, Torkoal doesn't switch out. Interesting. Just Reflect going up here. Okay. Yawn coming out. Which is fine. I don't mind that at all. Uh, and the rocks are going to do a nice, sizable amount of damage to both. Well, not sizable. It does very little to the Torkoal. It's very defensively built, especially with that yawn set there. Uh, but the the try attack. Oh, and we get the freeze. We get the freeze. That's huge. Try attack such a, 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 a horrible move at times. Um, obviously, with the the residual kind of effects that it does have. Uh, ooh, okay, what do we do now? Do we just rock slide? Rock slide, I think, and get, and get, oh, I kind of don't want to take P2 out. I can prefer to get Buzzwall out onto the field here, but I don't really want to force it if it's, it's not super necessary. I could see the Torkoal kind of switching again. Uh, let's rock slide this time and then go for a try attack into Grimmsnarl. And that should be enough to get the Grimmsnarl. Torkoal going to switch out now. Makes sense, Venus all coming in. Okay. Uh, and Grimstar switching out as well. So the double switch here. So Lander is going to come back onto the field. Uh, the double up into Grimstar, the right decision for us uh, on this occasion. So let's see if we can. Um, but Gigalith shown how good it can be in this sort of matchup, you know. The screens are up. My opponent's kind of got that like buffer to help them out for sure, but. I think just holding off, going for the max here is, is, is the best thing for us to do. Um, now we've got the option where we can potentially pull in... Um, ah, that's the problem, the yawn there. But I think we still switch Buzzwall at this point. Maybe pull a double switch. How many turns of trickery? We've got one turn left. The issue would be if the Landorus max is here, where I think... You know, we'll probably be better going for a recover. It's just if the Venusaur maybe has sleep powder here. And a little bit of... Yeah, I think we're a bit gung-ho with keeping the, the, the Gigalith on the field there, you know. Uh, Torko coming back in. Going to overwrite the sand. But that's... It's still not the worst. Especially with the Trick Room ending. Like, the, the Venusaur doesn't threaten Buzzwall too much. Even though it is going to max. And it is going to chuck out... A G Max Vine Lash, I think, into Buzzwall slot. May go after the P2. But the residual damage here, not ideal. But not the end of the world. The other option here would have been like Eerie Impulse, the, um, the Venusaur. That would have really shut down any options. So we are overlooking a few options here. Um, yeah, G Max Vine Lash into P2. Okay. The residual damage is not going to be the best thing for uh, for Buzzwall for sure. Not the worst either. Um, now, what are we going to go after this talk all with? This is where like Max Quake would have been ideal, you know. Um, Uh, 
Uh, the Torkoal's, yeah, frozen, so it's probably not likely to move. Um, let's max Hailstorm the Venu. Um, do we bring in Incineroar here? N I don't think so. I think we probably are better off. Maybe. Actually, that's what we're going to do. We're going to go max Knuckle, and we're going to go Trick Room. Because if we get rid of the Torkoal, then our Trick Room uh, mode is like is is very very strong. It's just whether or not uh, like P two will be able to take a Vine Lash here. And it should be from the previous damage. But as long as we can get rid, like we get the plus one here, which mitigates any Intimidate coming in, should get the Torkoal. Um, and then we get the Trick Room at the same time, which would be pretty good for us. Maxu is going to be ideal. We're not going to take very much damage from that at all. Uh, plus one will be very useful. Especially because we get, yeah, the Beast Boost here will be uh, on top of that. Oh, keep us at like plus one which is nice so we just need to make sure that we get the talk oh i think it's just hung on i think it's just hung on i think it actually took that no mm. oh my god oh my god it actually took that that's really bad for us that's really bad i can't believe it actually took that <sighs> okay oh, not so good not so good not so good not so good uh, not so good at all we'll have to go for the hailstorm um, and then go for recover and just hope that the torque stays asleep here uh, stays frozen yeah it does okay we're all right then we're all right kind of all right yeah and then the residual damage can take care of the torque so we're pretty fortunate there with the freeze initially anyway uh, but this just kind of making things a little bit easier. Not getting the beast boost there didn't help. Uh, and still not really doing enough damage at all to the Venusaur, you know? <sighs> the freeze just kind of, yeah, locking this game for us, really. Another Max Ooze coming out. But, I mean, at this point, with the Trick Room up, we're going to be in a position where we can take the Venusaur down the next turn. We should be able to. And the Torkoal finally going down. My opponent not having that option of the sun anymore, which is which is helpful. Uh, we still got Intimidate in the back with Incineroar, which is always useful. Buzzwall doing some work in this match at least. We should get the, the Venusaur the next turn though, 100%. Uh, with a max, max Hailstorm, but even plus one, you know. The Venusaur taking it pretty well. It is going to be the end of its max turns. And I think actually it's the Reflect in the, the light screen that are the, the big things here. Yeah, I think Max Hill into the Landorus. We try attack into the Venusaur. That should be enough to kind of get both. And we still got, yeah, we still got plenty of options. Max Hill Storm into the Landorus. Uh, and are we plus one with, with P2? Yeah, we're plus one. So that's, that's yeah, the try attack going to be enough to get it. Should be from this range, even behind the light screen. And that... Should lock it up. And Buzzwall, you know. Okay, the baiting us in, trying to cycle that intimidate round, which is fine. Um because the tri attacks should still be enough. And maybe Oh it's Oh my god. No way. This is just I feel super bad for my opponent here, because that's two freezes. What is this? Okay. This should be enough to get the Grim Snarl. No, it's not. Like, missing knockouts here, there, and everywhere. My opponent's got the best Kalk team I've ever seen, and we're just absolutely rinsing them with RNG abuse here. We're going to pick up two knockouts um, off the, the hail here. Buzzwell doing some work. We're going to continue to, to say that, but my opponent, I feel, yeah, I mean, <sighs> I feel bad, but it is it is just one of those things, isn't it? Uh, it's like it's not it can't be helped. Um, I just I can feel their frustration because I know how frustrated I would be in their position, um, because the Buzzwall likely to go down there. Um, even though we would have got the Grimstone anyway, uh, but that would have been a little bit of a comeback for them to to at least get that. I think the big thing was obviously the the Torque Hole. Uh, yeah, which was j just really unfortunate, you know. Um, not ideal and now we're in a position where we can just ice punch ice punch and try attack and that should be enough 
We've still got the Incino on the back that can kind of close the game out for us. My opponent, fair play to them, not forfeiting. So you've got to give them all the credit in the world for like for that, you know, because like at this point, I would have probably snapped my, my switch and thrown it out the window um, and burnt my copies of Sword and Shield and uh, many other things. But fair play to them for playing it out. And uh, Wilcat do just have to say apologies about the uh, the bad RNG there because it is a really unfortunate situation, you know, um, and sometimes it just can't be helped. But um, thank you for being an amazing sport. Hopefully you guys at home enjoyed the match with all the RNG. It's always good entertainment anyway. And uh, we'll hop over now and grab the, the, uh, the rental for you guys for today's team. Okay, so here is today's rental code, friends. It is the Buzzwall team, and uh, you know we got to see it do some work. Uh, RNG aside, it did do a bit of work. Uh, it had a lot of help from the P2, obviously, and just showing how strong tri attack can be as an option, uh, which is you know sometimes the RNG just doesn't like uh, like you. And uh, for my opponent, it was definitely the case in that last game. But fun games nonetheless. We saw a bunch of the team today. Uh, we've seen pretty much everything perform. So it's been a really nice nice one hopefully if you try the team out you enjoy it obviously it isn't a super serious team in series 9 but it might inspire some ideas and it's always worth trying to play around with pokemon that you do like i love buzzwell i think it's a cool pokemon and see if you can get it to work in the format and maybe just pick up some wins with it and then that might inspire some ideas once you've played around with it to take it even further forward and really come up with something quite innovative and that's a way to do it you know and um, why not when you can when you can have the opportunity to do it in a series like series nine where there are so many possibilities and so many innovative ideas that you can go forward with the team so if anything hopefully it's just inspired you to kind of do something a bit out of the box uh, because it's always fun to do that at least but if you do try the team let me know down in the comment section as always i do love to hear and uh, we'll wrap things up there so thank you so much for tuning in have a great rest of your day take care of yourselves more importantly than anything else and i'll see you all soon for another episode here on the channel so until then take care and bye bye